Remember that parking lot earlier in the season charging five bucks just to walk on the property? We sent 19 National News reporter Joy Benedict to get the lowdown on the sidewalk shakedown. The Browns' victory was full of celebration, but for some fans, this win was tarnished by a tailgate takedown. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. We think so, too, but here it is in black and white. Tailgaters welcome if you pay. We were like, really, you charging people? Five dollars just to walk into the parking lot. This lot off West Third Street is added again. Thirty dollars to park, and if you have extra tailgaters, they pay extra too. We had already paid fifteen dollars to park, so that was five each for us, and then we each had to pay five. So really, we should have just parked here, yeah, park right and here. that would have been the same price. So we walked on the lot looking for our own payment in answers. We're not going to be any comment at this time. Our okay, unnamed we'll parking place. employee not feeling too chatty, but did say the pedestrian fee stays. We're fully compliant with city of Cleveland law with the admissions tax. Like it or not, this parking lot is private property, and that means that they have the right to charge you a pedestrian fee. However, like in any business, there is competition. So if you don't want to pay it, don't park here. The parking lot next door, $25. The one across the street, $25. But some say they like the expensive lot, its proximity to the stadium, the view, the space, and they'll pay for the perks. I just don't mind. It was fine. It was a good time. But for the rest of you in the world of business, no price is permanent. So if you want this tailgate version of a pedestrian pick to go away, next week, if you see this sign, throw the flag. Park somewhere else. Joy Benedict, 19 Action News. As we work to keep kids safe. Yeah, another question here. How close is too close and why do we continue to hear about these sex offenders living illegally close to schools and daycares? 19 Action News reporter Joy Bennett getting answers as neighbors in one community are waiting for something to be done. Joy? Yeah, you know, we keep hearing that magic number, a thousand feet from a school, a thousand feet from a daycare center. But one local community is learning that these numbers really don't mean much when you're dealing with loosely written laws. This mom knows safety comes first, but even though Danielle Hughes can strap her daughter into her car seat, there is no seat belt that protects against sex offenders. You never know if one of them can slip off, somebody might take them. A fear intensified when we told her not one, not two, but six registered sex offenders live dangerously close to her daughter's daycare. That kind of scares you because I have two kids. So exactly how close are registered sex offenders to this school? Walk with me. I'm less than a block away, and I have one registered sex offender in this building and two more in that one across the street. And look at this map. All six sex offenders are within a 1,000 feet of the kids' center in Illyria. So we knocked on doors and rang doorbells looking for an explanation from our ex-cons. They didn't answer, but the sheriff's office did. The law fell through the cracks when they wrote it. Sergeant Diana Nichols is frustrated. She can't arrest any of our sex offenders. Our hands are tied. The law doesn't give us... Uh, the authority to arrest a sex offender who's living in an entity he's not supposed to be. The city has to take action first because it's a civil offense. Plus four of our sex offenders are legal in this neighborhood. Because although no sex offender can live near a school, only the worst offenders or those convicted after 2008 are prohibited from living near daycares. It's a loophole that seems just too dangerous for this mom. They should let the daycare know when there's sex offenders around. And that's the thing, it's information, and information is key to keeping your children in safe. And in Lorain County, that's easy. They'll notify you if a sex offender moves within a mile of a school, a business, your home, whatever you want. All you got to do is log on to their website and let them know what area you want monitored. And you can do that by logging onto our website at 19actionnews.com. We've got a link. Just click on our As Seen on 19 section. Reporting live at the Newsplex, Joy Benedict, 19 Action News. 19 Action News reporter Joy Benedict on the scene as it all unfolded. New at 6 30. It's not the usual scene in Uniontown. Sharpshooters on the roof, SWAT team in the grass, and the busiest road in the area shut down. In Uniontown, Ohio? <laughs> I says, oh, we're in a hood now. <laughs> but jokes aside, neighbors like Gene Kurtz were on pins and needles for six long hours. It was scary. It was scary. Then from her hiding spot, she saw this. Her neighbor, tackled by the SWAT team, patted down and walked away in handcuffs. We're told the standoff started about 8 o'clock this morning. That's when the man in this home came out that back door and started firing off his gun into the ground. I called the Uniontown Police Department. They were pronto here. 
They walked around a corner to ask him to drop the gun, and he threatened to uh, kill them. Mike Pertz lives just behind the shooter. He says when he saw his neighbor go inside, he said a prayer for a peaceful ending. You could hear him on a bullhorn. Uh, trying to get him to come out. But one hour turned to two, two to three. The Ohio State Patrol sent its SWAT team choppered in sharpshooters from Columbus. We were putting ladders up. They were up on one of my other garage roof and up on a house roof. The suspect holed up inside, still firing numerous weapons. We're told he got off more than two dozen shots. Then officers fired one of their own, tear gas. The guy came out. They told him to put his hands up. He did have he put his hand up and then went down. And they said, put your hands behind your head. And as soon as they did that, they all rushed him and he went down. The peaceful ending this community wanted, one that will surely be the talk of this town for some time to come. Joy Benedict, 19 Action News. In high definition, 19 Action News starts now. Hello, everybody. A pervert is on the prowl in Canton. Yeah, this sicko stopped two teens, asked for sexual favors. 19 Action News reporter Joy Benedict has the story from Stark County. Someone explain to me why these creepy men can't stay away from young children in the area. It makes me sick. But here we are again. This time, it was two young girls approached in Canton. She just said he was just trying to get to get them to get in the van with them. Like a scene from a horror movie, a creepy old man in a van rolls up on a group of children, asking them for sexual favors, offering cash. It's a violation, you know. I mean, it makes you feel... It makes you feel dirty. One of the girls solicited Mary Pizzoferrato's 15-year-old granddaughter. She's in ninth grade. Yes, I'm angry. Very angry. And so are we. Mary tells us her granddaughter and her 14-year-old friend left her house Saturday afternoon. They walked to her aunt's home just a few miles away to pick up her 10-year-old brother. But when the three were walking back to Grandma's down 15th Street Southwest, that's when the crime happened. She said that she has seen the van before and... And it's, they just, he just honked his horn. But this time he approached them. But when our creep rolled up, these young girls knew exactly what to do. They stomped, they ran back to their aunt's house, and they called 911. And although everything turned out okay this time, Mary can't help but worry, fearful about the effects this encounter will have on her granddaughter. I don't want her to have that fear of going outside and, you know, afraid somebody's going to approach her in that way. And most importantly, she wants this man in jail. I just hope they catch this guy and, you know, before he actually hurts anybody. Again, this happened on 15th Street Southwest. That's in Canton on Saturday afternoon around 4 o'clock or so. We don't have much of a description. We know we're looking for a white man in his 60s. He was driving a light brown colored van. If you saw anything, please contact the Canton Police Department. In Stark County, I'm Joy Benedict, 19 Action News.